Jeremiah chapter 50, a message about Babylon. This is the word the Lord spoke through Jeremiah the prophet concerning Babylon and the land of the Babylonians. Announce and proclaim among the nations. Lift up a banner and proclaim it. Keep nothing back but say, Babylon will be captured. Bel will be put to shame. Murdoch, filled with terror. Her images will be put to shame and her idols filled with terror. A nation from the north will attack her and lay waste her land. No one will live in it. Both men and animals will flee away. In those days at that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah together will go in tears to seek the Lord their God. They will, they will ask the way to Zion and turn their faces toward it. They will come and, behind, and bind themselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray and caused them to roam on the mountains. They wandered over mountain and hill and forgot their own resting place. Whoever found them devoured them. Their enemy said, We are not guilty, for they sinned against the Lord, their true pasture, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Flee out of Babylon, leave the land of the Babylonians, and be like the goats that lead the flock. For I will stir up and bring against Babylon an alliance of great nations from the land of the north. They will take up their positions against her, and from the north she will be captured. Their arrows will be like skilled warriors who do not return empty-handed. So Babylonia will be plundered. All who plunder her will have their fill, declares the Lord. Because you rejoice and are glad, you are pillaged. Or you who pillage my inheritance, because you frolic like a heifer threshing grain and neigh like stallions, your mother will be greatly ashamed. She who gave you birth will be disgraced. She will be the least of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, a desert. Because of the Lord's anger, she will, be, she will not be inhabited, but will be completely desolate. All who pass Babylon will be horrified and scoff because... Of all her wounds. Take up your positions around Babylon. All who draw the, bow, the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout against her on every side. She surrenders, her towers fall, her walls are torn down. Since this is the vengeance of the Lord, take vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done to others. Cut off from Babylon the sower and the reaper with his sickle at harvest. Because of the sword of the oppressor, let everyone return to his own people. Let everyone flee to his own land. Israel is a scattered flock that lions have chased away. The first to devour him was the king of Assyria. The last to crush his bones was Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will punish the king of Babylon in his land as I punished the king of Assyria. But I will bring Israel back to his own pasture, and he will gaze or graze on Carmel and Bashan. His appetite will be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and Galeed. In those days at that time, declares the Lord, search will be made for Israel's guilt, but there will be none. And for the sins of Judah, but none will be found. For I will forgive the remnant I spare. Attack the land of Marathim, and those who live in Pe Pecod, pursue, kill, and completely destroy them, declares the Lord. Um, so there is a lot here just in this first portion. Um, so listen to what Jeremiah is telling about Babylon. Uh, a nation from the north will attack her and lay waste her land. No one will live in it. Both men and animals will flee away. And then he goes on to say, um, Whoever found them, devoured them. Their enemy said, we are not guilty, for they sinned against the Lord, their true pasture, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. So Jeremiah is telling uh, the people about Babylon and how he, Babylon, because remember, at this time they were pretty much exiled. And so in, in the people, the remnant that was left. So he was telling them that Babylon too will be conquered um, because... They glow, even though the, the Lord had utilized them because uh, and had built them up, allowed them to be built up and allowed for them to conquer all these na other nations because of 
the detestable acts that all these nations, including Israel and Judah, had done, not worshiping the Lord, not declaring the Lord, etc. And so Babylon too, because they refuse, um, even Nebuchadnezzar, even uh, the kings of Israel from time and time, or not Israel, but from Babylonia, time and time again, they would recognize the Lord and then, but not be a person who is showing their people, hey, this is who the Lord is. This is who we are to follow. Um, allowing for other detestable acts to continue to go on, allowing for worship of other gods, etc. And so, so uh, assuredly, Babylon too will be overthrown. And he is also giving um, information about Israel, Israel and the reason why they were exiled. He goes on to say, though, <clears throat> about Israel, um, that... But I will bring Israel back to his own pasture, and he will graze on Carmel and Bashan. His appetite will be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and Gilead. Because there's that hope, because this is the people that he had chose. These are the people that he had chose to be a reflection of his love. And he also is declaring that when they do come back, when they do come back and they are back in the promised land, that at that time he's like, all their sins will be wiped away. And there's a reason for that because this, like I said, this is multiple, multiple um, meanings in these prophecies. Um, one is, can take it is, yes, they did come back from the exile and they rebuilt the temple. They were able to rebuild the temple. But also he's talking about the future future. He's talking about something that we will talk about in Revelations as well. Um, he's also talking about something that happens in the New Testament, with our Lord and Savior. So there's a lot here. And bringing past to present, we too can see that even though we get shaken, even though the things get shaken up, we too can rely on the Lord and trust the Lord. We can trust the Good Shepherd because He is going to be that hope. He is the Good Shepherd. He will guide us through and protect us along the way. So before we go on though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think?